Hi, and welcome to Chronically Happy's Apple Taste Test. What makes the best applesauce? Well, I really don't know. That is why I am making this new series on my channel. Come, so come along with me and figure out what kind of apple is the best apple for applesauce. So this first apple is from New Zealand. It's called an Envy Apple. I have never tried it before. So I'm putting that in. The second apple is called a Rave Apple and that's all it had on there on the tag was Rave and USA. So that's all I know. And the third apple is called a Sweet Tango Apple. And I've never heard of it before either. I haven't heard of any of these. So let's give them a shot. All right, so this is the core peeler and slicer all in one. You stick the apple on these little pings there, or uh, things there, and uh, give it a crank. <laughs> I'm just breaking my freaking phone. <laughs> All right. So, try to see this here. I have a little bowl next to me to throw all my uh, little pieces in. All right, so as you can see, pull most of that off, clean this guy up a little bit, and pull that sucker back. That's ready and loaded for the ready to load for the next one. All right, so right here, uh, the parts that the peeler doesn't get, I just take a knife, my paring knife too, and just cut it off. So. Mmm. Ooh, this is good. This tastes, this reminds me of like a, a Cosmic Crisp, which are some of my newest favorite apples. Mmm. So good. Mmm. So, when it comes to applesauce and making applesauce, as long, you know, what I do, what I like to do is I like to make sure that there's like no bruising, no worms on it, because like... The, Granted, the ones that I'm showing right here are store-bought, so I don't have much of a problem and I don't have to look so hard, but you can see in here, it did a pretty good job of coring it. I still got some of the skin on the top here, so I'm just kind of cutting around it and throwing the rest in a pot, and the uh, my phone is leaning up against the pot, and the pot is full of, so see a little bruising there? I just kind of cut that off. There, all good. And then, yeah, it slices it as I turned it. So it's fantastic. That's my favorite part about this process. It's so much faster than pears. <laughs> All right, so this is apple number two. This is the rave apple. Hopefully I'll give it rave reviews. <laughs> I don't think I got the core very well on this one. Yeah. Womp womp started started peeling out <laughs> it was peeling out it was going too fast and it like messed up <laughs> so it pretty much just tore part of the core already off and it was just kind of spinning its own wheel it's got a little stubby <laughs> oh i touched my face i gotta go wash my hand now I should be wearing my gloves too because the gloves are so much better. I I, I have a I have a thing with my hands. I, I don't like it when my hands have anything sticky on them or like anything really. I, I just can't handle it. I wash my hands. I spend more time washing my hands when it comes to prepping and cooking food than I do really actually prepping and cooking the food because I'm always washing my hands. I just I don't like things on my hands. I have like a. I don't know. It's just a sensitivity. I just don't like things in my hands. <laughs> All right. So let's try this again. Here, let's show a pot full of apples that I've put in there so far. As, and once this is full, I'll throw it on the stove, cook the apples, reverse in blender to blend it up to about the consistency that I like, which I personally like having a few chunks in my applesauce. I think it's so dang good to have a big chunk of apple in it and not have it all be completely to sauce. But it's my own personal preference, so I try to leave some chunks in there. 
And that's part of the reason why I don't like use a blender or anything like that, because I like to taste the chunks. So apple number two, the rave apple. Mm. This is a little bit tart. So this rave apple would probably be really good mixed in with uh, like Granny Smith apples for uh, apple pie feeling because using a more tart apple and adding sugar to it, it tastes so good as a pie filling. And I've never done pie filling before, so this could be my first year that I make my own pie filling and can it. My mom usually does all of this. This is the first year I'm actually doing my own applesauce too. I've never done it before this year. Uh, I'm a beginner when it comes to canning a lot of things. Like I'm just used to doing pickles. Like pickles is my thing and it's always been my thing every year. And this is the first year in like five years that I haven't done pickles. And I'm, I'm really disappointed I didn't get cucumbers in time. I just, this summer has been really, really busy guys. It's been a uh, really, really kind of hectic in the last couple of weeks, last couple of months really. I mean, really, it, seriously, it's just, I've been busy. <laughs> I haven't had time to do all of these apples, and so I'm so behind. I'm trying to get as much done before my parents go home. Uh, they went out of town to go help my uncle out down in the southern Oregon coast area. And so uh, I've been home alone all week, and it's been so nice. I love being home alone. I, I just love the freedom of, like, using more of the house. Like, it's not that I don't feel like using the house. It's just I just don't have the energy for it a lot. I really don't. I had to like be mentally and physically able to like get things done and having a combination of all my disabilities and such. It's just, it's really difficult. Sorry, this is taking so long. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. It takes a little while to do this. This is a long process. Uh, I'm really happy to show you all how I'm, how applesauce is made and how to choose the right apple. I mean, but in all honesty, it's all a matter of taste. Um, everybody's taste buds are different uh, and they change every seven years. I don't, I don't know if that's really a fact or not. That's, and I've never, I don't know if I've really looked into it all the way <laughs> to verify that. So don't, don't yell at me if it's misinformation. Uh, this would be a lot faster if my core was working. But it really is a matter of uh, a preference of taste. I did my very first batch mixed with pears, and that was great, so I didn't use as much uh, processed sugar already. So that made it really, really good. I can't believe that apple thing's almost full. It's going to be store-bought apples in this very first part that I blend up. The second part's going to be all the um, free apples I got from my friends. Like, there's no way I could afford to really even pick my apple flavor for my applesauce but now that i do have various flavors now i think it's great i'm going to learn i'm going to learn more about apples throughout the year and i'm going to figure out what apples i like the most i really didn't know i had a preference from that i haven't been much of an apple eater uh, my mom loves apples and her favorite are now um they were honey crisp but now she's gone to cosmic crisp those are now her favorite so the first batch of apples I got from my, uh, my dad's uh, old uh, co-worker. They both retired from the post office. Um, we went over to his house and picked apples off their tree. And I don't know what kind of apple they were. But that mixed with the Cosmic Crisp was my very first batch of uh, 12 pint jars of applesauce this year. And oh my gosh, it was so good. I ate that, I ate 10 pints in the first seven days. I ate 10 of them already. So this is the size, this is what a pint jar looks like. This is like my 12 ounce tumbler. So it's not quite as big as a 12 ounce cup. Which I got some spiced apple cider in. And okay, so here's a good example of when it doesn't quite core it just right. I mean, it cored it, yes, but also there's some more bruising. I like to cut that off. Get all the outside parts taken care of before I deal with the inside. 
All right, now, I just like to cut it right in half. And then you can see, I don't want any of this like hard stuff, part of the core to get into my applesauce. So I take the parts that are unaffected by it and just toss it in. The other parts that are not affected by it. So this part of the apple, it was, I was quite a bit affected by it. So yeah, I haven't taste tested this one yet. Have I, the third one? I don't think so. <sighs> all right, I'll taste it when I'm done cutting all of these up. There's a second part of the apple that didn't have quite enough of the core. Dang it. Didn't get any there in there, did I? No. That was close. That was close, guys. <laughs> All right, so let's take that off, that off. That. Yeah, this pot is full. This is only six apples, and that's like, that makes a whole pot of applesauce. Well, before I blend it, anyways, an inversion. Inversion it. <laughs> That's how I envision. <laughs> Inversion things. I'm full of the puns today. Excuse me. All right. How punny. And the very last part of the apple that's affected by the inner part of the core that the core didn't get right here. I cut it all the way down so that's the only affected parts. And just cut that off. Uh, so the first one was sweet. The second one was kind of tart. A sweet tango. That was really tart. This would make a great apple pie feeling. All right. So there you have it. Almost a full pot. I'm going to take the inversion blender now. Oh, no. Hold up. I, I forgot a step. I got to cook it down first. And here's my leftover pieces so we're gonna get this uh, stove started i'm gonna cook down these apples and that'll take some time so i'm not gonna bore you guys with uh with a whole bunch of silence or whatever else i want to talk about uh, i want to be able to watch videos and such while i make my applesauce and peel more apples all right so now that everything is I, I kind of stirred it in with my hand. I am going to now cook it with the lemon juice and water. And then once, this, once the apples are like a little soft, I drain the water and lemon juice and reuse it this, a second time for the next batch of apples. I just, it's an efficient way to just reuse the same water and lemon mixture so I'm not being wasteful. And, uh, and then it really does like absorb a lot of the flavor from the apples that I had in there before. So. It's all going to be combined <laughs> in the end. So stay tuned for my next episode in the apple sauce making process after figuring out a taste test of what kind of apples you like. So my first, just to kind of give a conclusion here from the first episode, I talked about tasting the apples before making an applesauce and what makes good applesauce. That's really a personal preference. And so far this season, I have made an apple pear sauce that was the best out of an unknown apple flavor and some pears from my friends, my parents' friend's yard. And then I mixed, so I had apple and pear mixed together with Cosmic Crisp in the first batch. And I made 12 pints. It was so good. I ate it all in seven days. So my second batch. I made just applesauce with no pear. I had to add like three cups of sugar, I believe, to finish up the apples from my parents' friend's house, old coworker. Um, and then the, uh, so it was an unknown apple and it was all right, but I think what made the first batch so great was the Cosmic Crisp. I think they're a delicious apple. They're a little bit sweeter and crisper than Honey Crisp, but they do really remind me of a Honey Crisp. That's probably why they got their Cosmic Crisp name. Crisp, Honey Crisp, Cosmic, eh, they both taste pretty similar. They're really dang good. Um, so that was a delicious apple pear sauce and I only used a couple cups of sugar and I strained all the juice out. And by the end, I ended up drinking that apple pear juice by itself because it was so delicious. Uh, apple pear lemon water juice. <laughs> uh, so I usually don't add the sugar until I get all the apples in the pot. 
But I'll go over that part of the process here pretty soon in my next episode. So stay tuned, guys.